So I'm going to replace this Costero here with a new one. Now I've actually purchased one from AliExpress. It's a multimedia one, those big double den high screen ones. That's kind of similar to what used to be in this car originally from the factory. It used to be a double den stereo in here. Had a reversing camera and everything all on that screen. So it's got all this stuff in the car to do those features. But someone, when it came to the country with that stereo, put this one in. And this is rubbish. So it's time to upgrade the stereo. I'm going to put in a nice multimedia one which has got reversing camera function and that sort of stuff. And I'm going to show you how to do it. How to get the stereo out, how to change it. Wiring, I'll cover some of that as well and that sort of stuff. And we'll go through it and show you get it all apart. We start putting it apart. Now this needs to come out so we can get all this bezel and everything out and get the stereo out and stuff like that. So there's a few sections to this. We've got these side panels here to come off. Get this out. Then we can move the whole assembly and strip the stereo off it and that sort of stuff from behind. So it's actually fairly straightforward. This car is actually fairly easy to do. I've done some other cars which have been a real pain. You've got to take half the console apart to get to the stereo. This one's relatively easy. So we've got to get this top piece out first. And this is actually quite easy on this one. Just grab it and pull. And there we go. That's the top piece out. Now the side panel is a little bit harder. You need a plastic spudger. You have to use a plastic one. Otherwise you could scratch things or damage things. So you've got to get underneath this panel here. Try and find a gap, try and create a gap somewhere. Might have to go from this side. There you go. And got this pulls forward as well once you get the clips out. There's another clip down the bottom there somewhere. Try and pop it up. There we go. There's that side out. So it's got these clips to push in. So unplug the stereo wire. Let's try this side. The same technique from the inside edge. Seems to work quite well from the inside edge. There you go. Right. And I've just pushed a button. That one. <laughs> right. There we go. Right. And this has got a wire attached to it as well, so I have to watch out for that. Don't yank on it too much. Okay, so that's that part. So you have to grab hold of this and yank this bit out as well. It's all clipped. It's really stiff though, this one. It takes a bit of effort to get this one out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm saying, the clips on this are pretty stiff, so I've just got to try and lever it at each point. There we go, that's that side. And let's try and lever this side out. I'm using, say, plastic, so I don't damage anything. And there's that piece, which is the heat control. Right, so we just tuck that out of the way for now, spin it around, get it out of the way. That's the stereo. So now it's got to pull this piece out, which is four screws around the sides. Screw it. What I always do is I stick the finger, hook it over the back of the screws when I'm doing it, that way you don't drop it. Because you can drop them and have them disappear behind the dashboard and then end up with a rattle problem later on because you can't find a screw and it sits there rattling on something for the rest of its life. So I always do try and hook behind them when I can. These ones are hard to reach, you can't really do that. Until you get the thing out far enough. The other thing normally helps is actually have a magnetised screwdriver. Now this screwdriver normally is magnetised but it seems to got a bit weak recently so it's not actually doing too good a job at that. I'm going to do this one, I'm going to pull the stereo with it so the screw stays in the bracket. Okay. And there's the stereo wiring, just like that. So we need to unplug this wire, which is the antenna. And we've got this big block here. So this is this adapter system that I use, and basically, you can buy a commercial adapters off the shelf thing and you can go from like Toyota, Nissan, whatever brand it is to a universal kind of connector like this. And so that's that part adapted to the car then you've got another system which will go between that adapter and the stereo. So you can get different ones for different stereos or you get generic ones you have to wire them in that kind of thing. You can just get off the shelf stuff and just plug and play. Like if you've got a Sony stereo you get a Sony adapter and you've got a Toyota car you get a Toyota adapter and you plug them together and you're done. Nice and easy. I do like that system. Obviously you pay for it. If you wanted to save yourself some money, you can just get the Toyota side for example, or the Nissan side, whatever this is a Toyota. Then you can just cut the wires off and just splice into the wires and save yourself this part of the, of the cost. But 
generally it kind of defeats the purpose of having a universal adapter system. It's just made to be easy so anyone wants to chuck them in and not worry about it too much. So we get a closer view in here. We've got all these other plugs which are part of the electrical system of this car which were the old stereo connections and accessories and all sorts of bits. So I don't know what half these things do. Um, <laughs> I mean there's another one down here and here. I mean there's just loads of them. Um, now this car does also have a CD player stacker in the back. Well it's actually under my seat but that's not used. Um, obviously the wiring of that, some of that is for the control system for that unit and things like that. So that's not used anyway. So, But yeah, lots of wires in here. But basically, the trick with this is just ignore it unless you know you need to use it. So you look at that and go, oh, that's a bit of a nightmare. But actually, it's not that bad. So let's unplug this stereo. We don't want this anymore. This little pin so you push those down. There we go. So that's that stereo up. Now we will need the bracket. We'll need to take this off and uh, use that on the new stereo because obviously that bracket's meant for this car. These are the two wires we need. Maybe those three actually. I think it's these three wires we need. And the rest of it is all kind of optional stuff. It's even an earth wire floating around here, which is interesting. From this lot. An unconnected earth wire. It always makes me interested. Okay. But yeah, I might actually try and figure some of this wiring out. Because things I do need to do is hook up to the reversing camera. I also need things like a reversing signal. So I think because the original stereo had reversing camera set up on it, I think there will be a wire on one of these plugs which has the reverse signal on it. If I could find that, that'd be great. It saves having to run a wire all the way through to the back of the car. Well, hopefully there's a reversing signal here. So I can use that. That way when you go to reverse it almost switches the stereo onto the reverse camera. That's the plan. Now I'm just going to take this bracket off. So you've got four screws inside in this case. And like I said we've got to retain the bracket for our own use. But we won't need to be using this tray anymore. That little compartment tray will be gone because obviously the stereo is going to take up that space instead. The bracket's usually marked left and right. I mean you've got double holes this side. Which go over these, so you can't really get it wrong anyway. Plus, that steps in, so you shouldn't be able to get it wrong. But usually, they're not left and right in the brackets. But so, here's the left bracket, and it's got this trim panel which is stuck on the side of it. So, that may or may not need to stay. I'm not sure if the stereo profile will come right out to this or not. Usually, they're pretty squared off, so I imagine it will just come up to here and it will, will keep this profile on the side of it. That's what I'm expecting anyway. And there's the tray part, and there is obviously the old stereo. We can now put these to one side. So this is the wiring pack for the new stereo. There's quite a bit going on here. I also picked up this adapter, which hopefully is the right one. I don't actually know for sure. I'll try and see if I can find a plug which actually matches. So this then goes to the stereo, which has got a um, video input. It's got a six volt voltage regulator, which runs a rear camera. It's got a power supply input and an earth. And then it's also this plug to connect to the original wiring harness, which should have the power and the video signal coming from it. I've got to try and find that. It should be in here somewhere. <laughs> I'll just hope it's the right plug. It might not be. This particular stir, which I purchased for AliExpress, also gave me this free gift, which is a whole bunch of body panel removing tools and things like that. It's got a Bluetooth OBD2 adapter in there as well. So you can plug this into your OBD2 port. That then sends data to the stereo so you can actually see your information about the system, like the actual car itself on the screen of the stereo, apparently. Um, we'll look at that maybe. And this is the stereo I'm putting in. It's actually a no brand stereo, but I've actually found very similar units, almost identical, called Xtrons. Xtron brand. So this is just off AliExpress. So, you know, it's probably a rebranded thing anyway, but there's no branding on it. So, you know, hmm, generic Chinese stereo, I suppose. That's what you could really say about that. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. It's supposed to do lots and lots of stuff. It's got like a port in here for, uh, it's got a USB port and SD card in there and another one over this side, that's a reset button and a micro SD card over there as well, one's for doing GPS, one's for just memory card for doing playback and stuff like that, got a DVD slot, DVDs in there and play those, built with microphone for hands free, it does have a microphone port and stuff which plug into the back here as well, 
So you can see this stereo actually has this bezel which does come right out around the side. These little bits of trim on the sides, which I had in the upper stereo, they won't be needed because it's built into the side of this already. So it should go, in theory, this actually fits through the hole in the front of the dash that's already in there, in that panel. Should do. Interesting, I just found this module stuck in there, which I just unplugged. It's like an aftermarket thing, so there's free TV in. It's got some Japanese on here as well, because it's a Japanese car. So and as that earthwise just floating around, I wonder if this is like a TV conversion system from this car from the old screen, which is now normally used. I have to do a couple of things here. So I've mounted a bracket on here now, but it doesn't really quite go fully forward in this particular bracket. I might actually need to trim a bit off this bracket at the top here, just to make it fit a bit better. It's just right up against the back of the stereo there. I've got these screws, screws in just, and that screw there will line up, but I think I just need to give it a bit of a tweak. It's not quite perfect. Um, I haven't got the other bracket on there yet. I was checking the fitness to see which holes it is, because I could either use these two holes or the front two holes. Couldn't use both sets at once. So I was just trying to figure out what the story was there and figure out what the fitment was. So these back ones are the ones I need to use in this case. Get the angle grinder on this and just take the front edge of that bracket off just to get it forward like it's supposed to be. Bit of an oversight for the people made the stereo, but that's probably why it's cheaper. The other thing I had to do is got these two posts that stick out, which used to go into these locators on these trims on the front. What I've had to do is cut those off because they actually hit on the back of the stereo for the same issue with the back of the front panels in the way. So I'll just cut those, the ends of those off so those aren't protruding anymore. That solves that problem. So I'm going to go and trim these brackets, get these brackets fitting a bit better. So you go, that's the bracket trimmed down. And you can actually see there is actually a uh, left marking on that one. And the other bracket here. This bracket does indeed have a right marking on it. So they are marked left and right, as they normally are. You can just trim this front edge off. Right, so the two holes are still there. So if you need to use this bracket on an original stereo or in future, you can still do it, it's not like it's been destroyed, it's just trimmed off a bit, so save that wasted space. So you go, there's a bracket fitted. So I've got three screws on there now. And these are actually threaded bolts. They're actually proper threads, not just a plastic screw. Sometimes you've got like a really short, self-tapping kind of screw thing. These are actually threaded, so that's quite nice. Now, it's not perfect, the bracket does not sit flush on this side. Reason being, it's got those little dimples for locating it, and they actually not got any holes there. So that's going to sit slightly proud. If I was worried about it, I'd grind the dimples off, but I'm not that worried about it because it shouldn't really matter that much. And when you do these screws up, make sure they're not quite tight because the vibration will make them come loose if you're not careful. So make sure you do them up pretty tight. I mean, obviously don't strip them out. Don't leave them a bit loose or, you know, give them a bit of effort to tie them up. So now we've got the brackets on. Let's just double check this and make sure it actually fits properly. Let's just slide that in place. There's some wiring down here. You have to be careful about rubbing on that. So that needs to sit in there, that's on, that's in, so that's how it's going to sit, that's going to bring the surround up, make sure it's going to go on nicely. And that should all lock into place and go around the stereo and line up. It should do. If it doesn't I might need to tweak things a little bit. So it's looking like it's very slightly off to one side. But maybe because I'm not quite screwed, because I haven't got it screwed down, so it's just sort of sitting there right now. I may just tweak the brackets very slightly to make that work. So it's sitting very slightly to the left. Or, the, or this frame is sitting slightly to the left. One of them is. Anyway, that will go. Alright. That does go. That's fine. Yeah, push that in. There you go. So that's how it's going to look at the end. I might have to do some tweaking on these brackets because it is it's got a slight gap on this one. And that one's pushed back, so yeah, I'm going to have to tweak the alignments in these brackets very slightly just to get the stereo shifted very slightly that way. That's uh, not a big deal. So these parts are fun doing installations. All right, so now let's look at the wiring. Now we've got the mechanical stuff done. Now it's going to physically fit. There's a lot of stuff in here to deal with. Now we've got a bracket here which we couldn't use in our case, so I'm bothered with that obviously. So we've got a little Wi-Fi antenna, which might be interesting in the space we've got. We have the main loom here, which is one we're definitely going to be using. We've got a USB play cable, which we're definitely going to be using. Um, GPS, we're going to be using that. We have a auxiliary input, 
auxiliary video and drive in, which means it's got a DVR thing built into it as well. Don't actually need that. We've got a dash cam already in the car, so I'm going to connect that anyway, I think. Yeah, actually, I don't think I need that one. I don't think I need that one because this one here has got the reversing camera on this one. That's all we're going to be using. Yeah, so we won't be using that cable. Another USB cable. We have a microphone cable, which I will plug in. I don't know if it's actually going to be needed or not. Actually, no, I'll leave it off as well for now because it does have a built-in mic. We've got all these RCA outputs and amplifier control stuff. We're not using any of that, so that can be left out. And here we have another USB cable. I'm going to be installing all the USBs. This one here is a CarPlay USB, so that's for the iPhone stuff, so that's quite an important one. And then we've got one more cable here, which is a USB mini to USB, which is like a front panel USB socket, which is on the front of the stereo, which we may or may not be using. So I'll check that to one side as well for me. All right, so I've got the wiring plugged in. I've been poking around trying to find, see if, if there's a reverse wire here somewhere. There isn't. Unfortunately, it started raining. It's a bit noisier now and a bit more dreary. So one of the wires I've got plugged in here is this one. It's got three cables on it. These are supposed to be the steering wheel remote controls. So the steering wheel's got controls on it. And in theory, this will then allow it to control the stereo, if it's all correct anyway. Sometimes you have to get adapters and stuff. I'm not quite sure what stories there. But this has got a plug which comes with it, which plugs straight into the factory wiring. So I'm pretty confident that's okay. Splice the brake wire, which is supposed to be handbrake. Stop the multimedia thing from playing when you're driving. I splice that to the ground because we're not really planning on watching multimedia stuff anyway. And who's to say it's the driver who wants to watch the multimedia? Maybe it's someone that's in the passenger seat that wants to watch a movie or something, you know? Who's to say that's what it is? I've just spliced that onto there for the time being. I've got to say, find this reversing wire. I might have to run a wire from the back or try and find one inside the dashboard here somewhere. It must be in the dash here somewhere. It has to be. It's around somewhere. I just haven't found it yet. And with the weather like it is, I can't really be outside the car and putting panels off, stuff like that. So I can't do that right now. Yeah, I've got a few unknowns here, which I'm not happy with. But um, anyway, I've got the power plugged in. Well, the connector's plugged in. I haven't powered out for the first time yet, so I thought I'd record that. Let's turn the ignition on. First position. There's a noise. There, it's even got the right logo on it. Look at that. So it's powering up. I guess that means it's not actually turned on, it's just doing some demo thing. Is it? Oh no. Android. Okay. So it is booting. Okay. Takes a while to start up. So, date is completely wrong. GPS is not hooked up yet. I haven't plugged that in yet, so I should do that too. So, we should look at something. Let's see if I can sync it to my phone, get the Bluetooth hooked up and try that out. See if that works. So I just paired it with Bluetooth and because I've got my name on my phone, I'm not showing you that because it obviously displays my name. That did work. So that seems to at least be functioning. I'll have to get the GPS set up. So I'm going to leave the reversing camera for now. I'm going to have to obviously dig into this in more detail, maybe get the correct connectors or something for this and figure that out because obviously right now it's not working. And I don't even know if the original reversing camera works. It may not even work. I'm not quite sure what is going on yet. So I'm going to have to figure that out. But for now, I'm going to have to leave that and move on to concentrate on getting the rest of the stereo done. And I'll come back to it later on. As you can see, I did actually end up using this other cable here. Reason being that um, it has the antenna connector output on that plug. And that's the only wire I'm actually needing, <laughs> is the antenna connection, which is used by the vehicle. So that had to be connected up. So it's a bit of a shame. Otherwise, I could have left that whole thing off. Wi Fi antenna's on there. I've got to hook up the. GPS antenna, which is here. I've already routed the USB cables through, so these are going through the dash here. And I've just gone poking through the side, coming out the glove box. There's actually a spare blanking panel down here, so I'm actually tempted to just swap that blanking panel out and um, put a different one in there. I could put a USB socket in there and just shove that in. I think we're just about ready to put the thing in, actually. So I'll just plug the radio antenna in. The reason I've only just done it now is because it's really short. Not much room to get it in. And I've got to try and poke everything here, in here through the gap and try and fit underneath the stereo. So I've got oh, basically all the plugs in the back of the stereo and hopefully it actually goes in place. There's a lot of mass here to try and deal with. 
lots of wires. This one has to stay sticking out. Bit fiddly, so I'll come back once I've done that. Okay, so I've dropped the stereo in. I've obviously hooked up the GPS antenna and that sort of stuff. All those other connections are done. Obviously apart from the reversing camera, which is a shame. Push the trim on, it's all fitting nicely now. I've, I've got the positioning just right, so that's all sitting there, it's all clipped on. So now we can actually look at doing the other stuff. Now I've actually decided to run this USB cable here out of the top corner here. I'm just gonna try and tuck it up here if I can. I think that's gonna be a reasonable spot for it. And I'm trying to keep the wires short to where the phone would normally sit, which would be up here somewhere on the side. On the driver's side, we can't really see it actually in shot on the camera. So I think I can actually now put these side trims back in again. Ah. <laughs> I've got to pull this back out again. I've got underneath this clip. It needs to be through here. Of course I have. I'll sort that out now. Why is that right place? Now I can put this uh, trim panel back on again. Right, let's get the bottom bin. I might have to do some tweaking. See, that's sitting just there. Just like that. That can be moved out the way and maybe stuck down or something. It'll do for now until I put a proper mount in for a proper socket somewhere else. Put trim panel back on. And we'll put that top panel back in again. I've still got to stick down the GPS antenna. That still needs to be mounted up over there, so I've got to do that yet. But I'm hoping that these wires will be out of the way. I'll try and slide this in. That's why I've also not stuck it down yet. In case it won't work there. I think it will. I think it will. I'm not sure I'm not going to get pinched. There's plenty of wire on that cable, I'm not worried about that. I can always pull some more through if I need to. I think I might need to. You know, I'll come back once I've got that fitted back in. Right, so let's pull through a little bit more wire. Now I'll just try and pop it in. There we go. Yeah, that's one thing I was a bit worried about is whether that wire is going to get hind hindered by this lid. It's barely touching it, so I'm not too worried about that. So all I have to do is give it a clean up here, so I'm going to stick that down. I mean, if I stick it further to one side, it would work better. Then I might work better on a corner, actually. Might be better on a corner. I might pop that back out and see if I can stick it to a corner. So I was going to record a video on this and I completely forgot. I hooked up this stereo here to the reversing camera on this Toyota Epson. So the factory reversing camera which is mounted on the back. The original factory stereo had a reversing camera system on here. I spent a lot of time trying to find the reversing camera signals behind here. Behind the stereo system. I could not find the video signals. There's no reverse wire signal either. There was nothing there. So I couldn't actually get anything behind the stereo. So I went searching. Now what I did find is just over here on the seal on the passenger side the wiring loom comes up here and there's actually a blue wire, quite a thick one. It's actually a sleeving and it's got a few wires inside it. It's got a yellow, blue, green and a shield wire inside there. The yellow is the video camera, green is power, blue is negative and shield is the video shield. Okay, So that's the wires that are inside here. So here's the wiring loom and I pulled the tape off found this wiring here and this is the cable right, so obviously I've stripped off the sleeving on the outside so I could try and check it out and there's the wires right so green is the 6 volts the so 6.3 volts I measured so a 6 volt power yellow is the video signal and there's a blue wire here which is the negative for the power because it's shared from the front and you've got a braid as well right, so I think the blue and the braid might even go together I'm not quite sure, but that's what I found. So after not searching around, I actually found the parking controller. It's up here. It's there. There it is. And it's a pain to get to. Anyway, it's got this plastic shelf in here. So this plastic shelf just here, right? It's got a screw this side behind the back. It's got another screw that side behind the back. Phillips screws. Quasi drive even either, probably Phillips. And so you can get those screws out, you take the glove box out, which is actually quite easy, you just literally just yank it. It's got some like clips and it just pushes on, so you just get it like this and just pull it upwards towards you and it, it pops it out. And then this thing here has got like a clip at the back as well, this is the manual sitting there. Behind that casing there, I really should have videoed this at the time, but there's actually a couple of nuts, one each side of the casing. Um, yeah, I can't really show you unfortunately. Can't see them. 
there's two nuts on each side which are really tight 10 mil nuts and you take those nuts out and then you can actually drop that housing down a little bit and you wiggle it around and you actually drop it down enough but you get to connectors now connectors do hook on the back of this edge here there's like a lip on the back of that so you got to sort of tuck them around that to get the thing out but it does come out and then you get the plug off there's a middle plug there's three plugs on it the middle plug is the one which has got the video and power signals on it and the reversing signal as well so you can actually unplug that middle plug and hang it down so you can get to it now the very right hand top wire which is yellow that's the one which comes from down there okay so that is the one you want that's the video signal and on the same top row of that connector about halfway down there's a red wire with a stripe on it i think it's about pin number seven or something seven one along some of like that the one below it has got nothing in it so that's how you find it as well but i think it's a red with a thing it's a black stripe i think it's red and black that is a reversing signal positive 12 volts so if you probe on that and you go into reverse you see 12 volts come on you have a time it's, it's zero volts so if you want to probe that one you verify you've got the right wire you hook onto that one for the reverse signal then you just run those over to the stereo and you get a reversing signal and then your camera works all right so let's fire this thing up let's chuck it uh i might have to juggle hands here holding the phone and stuff so i a shaky hand cam by the way can't do much about that and the nice thing about the stereo is if you go in reverse, even though it's booting up, it will jump straight to the camera, straight away. When you come back out again, the camera's on booting up. So um, you don't have to wait for the thing to actually boot before it will go to the camera. And that's half booted, it still goes to the camera. So that's working fine. So this has been a big challenge for me. I was probing around with a video tester and also stuff like a CCTV tester, which I picked up from Banggood for free as a review item so the reason I actually chose that so I could trace his video signals and uh, here we go once it's booted up it actually takes a bit longer to switch over there we go we don't want music on here do we? no don't want music so I think it's slow then because it's switching to the stereo at the same time anyway but yeah it works fine happy with that so also here's some of my notes so these are notes I took when I was trying to trace the wiring. So they came a plug in the back in the root in the natural hatch. It's got yellow and silver, red and silver, black and silver, and white and silver wires on it. They change over into a, like a double plug like this to a black, red, white, red, blue, and brown and silver. Okay. So these red ones, they are power wires. The black is the video, and the brown is the shield. Okay. And these are the actual pins on the connector. Well, I don't know if the numbering is correct. I don't know if I've got this numbering right or not. I don't know. But anyway, that's just the way I numbered it. And these wires, which you find in the hatch lid, so the wire goes between the actual camera connector in the in the hatch to the bodywork, is these ones here. Now, I do actually have some photos. I'll probably include them and add them in. I'll put some overlays in there or something to show the wires inside the bodywork, which are above the passenger seats in the back the rear seats it's like in the pillar was it the c pillar is it they're in there so that's what they go to we we'll go to that one and at that point they change over so it goes to the camera the hatch wiring the body wiring okay think of it this way and then it goes from these wires to these wires here in the c pillar all right so that's that yellow green and blue which we also saw in that um, blue sleeved wire down the passenger side of the car and these are my notes about other stuff which I've measured green, blue, yellow, so I know what those wires are at the front. So I really wish I'd actually taken the photos of that unit when I pulled it out so I could actually show you exactly where the wires are.